Is Raynor the Protoss we deserve? Will heroes ascend to the top? Ever be stopped? And did a fictional 1938 radio broadcast cause a mass panic in the US? All of these questions will be answered in today's episode of StarCraft Today. StarCraft Today. Your favorite StarCraft news show. Big news over the past week as Team Liquid picked up a new player. Elazer announced that he left Team XCOM AGO on the 11th of May and the Team Liquid announcement came just two days after. This is a well needed boost for Team Liquid who so far have been struggling to get a win on the board in the World Team League. Team Liquid is currently one of the bottom teams in the 12 team group stage, scoring only a single point in their first three clan wars. In their latest match against Team GP, they got very close to taking home the two points, but in the ace match, Ryang managed to take out Clem in a close TVT, giving Team GP two points, while Liquid only ends up getting one. Team MV also continued its dominant streak in the World Team League, not dropping a single map in their fight versus SSLT. Granted, SSLT is one of the weaker teams, but MV so far have only dropped two maps while winning a whopping 16 maps and scoring nine points. This is making them the team to beat in the league so far. Guangdong Freaks lose for a third time in a row as Dragon Phoenix game ended up being a bit too strong for them. The Freaks are currently 0-3 in the league, but as they have played the arguably three strongest teams in TPG, Envy and Kaizi Gaming, they might still have a chance at the playoffs if they manage to step it up soon. In Good Game Gaming versus Alpha X, Good Game Gaming fell one map short of sending it to the ace match. Dream managed to get a win, but Ratata did not manage to take out Astrea on Pride of Altaris, and as a result Alpha X gets the full three points, currently putting them on a shared third place together with Kaizi Gaming. Talking about Kaizi Gaming and their star-studded lineup, who uh, feel a, li a little bit like an unstoppable train, which uh, Psystorm had to painfully find out, losing 1-5 to five to Raynor and his companions. Maxpex was the only player capable of taking a map of the Kaizi Gaming lineup, but it wasn't enough for a single point. Kaizi is currently 3-0 with a 13-5 map score in the league. To conclude, we had the Shopify Rebellion squaring off against the massive underdog team Platinum Heroes. After Platinum Heroes' miraculous win against Team GP last week, all eyes were on them, but Scarlet, Beyond, and Harstem did not drop a map to the heroes who are currently on a 1-2 overall score. That leads us to the current league table, with Team NV on top with that insane map score, and on the very bottom SSLT with a minus 12 map score. Uh, of course, lots of cool matches as well to look forward to in the upcoming week in round number four of the World Team League. As always, we also had three ESL Open Cups this week, starting on the Sunday in Korea. We saw Hero make his first finals appearance of the week against DRG. In game one of the best of five, we saw the Protoss player open up with a single Oracle into an aggressive five gate follow up with Glaives. DRG's Roachhorn was a little bit too late to have the Roaches ready and as a result the Zerg hailing from Busan, Korea tried holding with Lynx and Queens. Sadly for DRG this was not sufficient to hold the onslaught of Adept and he was forced to tap out, giving Hero map number one. In game two, Hero continued his Adept aggression, this time without an Oracle and with only four gates rather than five. DRG's attempted link counter did not get the Nexus kill, and the Zerg ends up losing a couple of workers, forcing him into an all-in position. After a two-minute lasting defense, Hero makes the definitive hold, and for a second time in the series, DRG is forced to tap out. In the third game, we see a four Oracle squad make some debatable trades, while Hero continues stacking into double Forge upgrades as well as Charge. For a follow-up attack, Hero goes in with a bunch of Zealots at the front, while simultaneously dropping the main base. DRG does not have the units in position to defend, and as a result loses the third game, giving Hero his first ESL Open Cup win of the week. Some wild developments over in Europe, as the currently teamless Skillers completely tears up his stacked Terran bracket, 2 one Hero Marine and 2 0 Clem. Uh, in the final he faces yet another Terran as the final boss is going to be Special. Special managed to beat Strange 2-1 to on his side in the semis and Special gets off to a hot start as he takes map number one with a powerful two base push. Game number two is the game of the week as we see Special who blesses us with a speed benchy mech opener. Special deals a decent amount of damage initially and continues dealing damage with his Banshees throughout the game, taking a big lead after he pushes back a failed Protoss push. 
Special tries to go for the counter attack and deal a finishing blow, but barely does not manage to deal that blow, as with the help of some carriers, Skillas manages to hold, and he gains a certain amount of map control as well in that hold. With that map control, he eventually sets up a big run by to the third while simultaneously taking out Special's fifth base. Special can't hold on any longer and is forced to tap out, tying up the series one to one. In the third game, an initially failed two gas opener puts Skillas in a small lead. And when Special decides to follow this up with an SEV pool on two bases, Skillas barely manages to hold, takes the lead in the series for the first time. The fourth game special once again with a tricky opener as he gets a quick armory one base mine drop, dealing a fair amount of damage, especially in mining time. Special's follow-up push, however, does not quite seem as convincing as Skillas holds with a couple of batteries some chrono boosted immortals, giving the teamless player his first ever ESL Open Cup win in Europe. Big congratulations to Skillas, and we will be moving on to America, where quite frankly, some weird stuff was going on. Um, Max Pax losing to Armani, that might not be too weird in itself. And it might also not be the biggest surprise that afterwards Rainer manages to take out Armani if it wasn't for the fact that Rainer was playing Protoss. Um, after Rainer almost managed to take out Max Pax last week with his Terran in the NA ASL Open, the young Italian decided that this week it was a Protoss week and that Armani was the perfect victim. And Rainer actually managed to 2 0 the Korean GSL player with his off race. This is extremely rare uh, to happen where someone just takes an entire series. Last week we already saw him taking a map against Max Pax. Now he's taking out Armani 2 0. Perhaps he's playing random in the next uh, DreamHack Valencia regional. Who knows what his plans are? Rainer, however, did get kicked out in the next round by Beyond, but a uh, very impressive run nonetheless, reaching the semi finals and even getting two ESL Open points. That is more points than I currently have from ESL Open Cup. So, very, very impressive. Beyond did go on to face Hero in the finals, but Hero seemed on another level as he played a series where he seemingly always was in control even when he wasn't, even when he was down in supply while playing a Phoenix Charge Archon composition in the first two games, it still felt like Hero always was in control. In the third game, after being up 2-0, Hero switches it up a little bit with a triple Oracle opener into Blink. Beyond kept trying to break Hero, but the phenomenal defenses of the Protoss player was never broken and Hero thus wins his second ESL Open Cup of the weekend in another absolutely fantastic and stunning performance. Uh, Hero has been winning ESL Cups left, right and center for the past, I want to say, six, seven weeks or so. And he's in absolutely fantastic shape. I can't wait to see him at an offline event uh, fight, especially against some of the European Zergs. Before we answer the most important question of the week, we of course still have the clip of the week as well, where this week we have some great splits against Disruptors by a ter... a Zerg player, actually, as uh, Lumbo shows us how it's done. Supply swarm forces under attack. Hive cluster under direct assault. No, not deposited. Supply. Hive cluster under direct assault. Insufficient energy. Absolutely fantastic control against this disruptor, showing us that perhaps it's the Zerg who have the best splits after years of playing Ling Bane Wars with each other. Um, they're the ones that know how to truly dodge splash. Take that, Terence. That leads us to a brilliant story about a radio broadcast in 1938. This radio broadcast was an adaptation on the 1898 novel War of the Worlds. The episode opens with an introductory monologue based on the beginning of the original novel, after which the program takes on the format of an evening of typical radio programming, so music, being periodically interrupted by news bulletins. 
The War of the Worlds broadcast has become famous for convincing some of its listeners that a Martian invasion was actually taking place due to the breaking new style of storytelling employed in the first half of the show. However, it is uncertain how many people actually believed that a Martian invasion was happening. So they did some research and it wasn't a super popular program, but there were some people that were relatively panicked. And I think there was in certain cities a 40% of increase of calls to the police or something like that. So pretty minor. However, there also was a Spanish adaptation of this program. Um, and it was produced in February 1949 by Leonardo Paez and Eduardo Alcares for Radio Quito in Quito, Ecuador. Uh, reportedly, it set off a panic in the city. Police and fire brigades rushed out of town to engage the supposed alien invasion force. After it was revealed that the broadcast was fiction, the panic transformed into a riot. Hundreds of people attacked Radio Quito and El Comercio, a local newspaper owner of the radio station that had participated in the hoax by publishing false reports of unidentified objects in the skies above Ecuador in the days preceding the broadcast. The riot resulted in at least seven deaths, including those of Paez's girlfriend and nephew. So, uh, pretty sad ending to this otherwise uh, pretty interesting story. That's going to be it for today's episode of StarCraft Today. And of course, uh, yeah, uh, enjoy the show. Uh, subscribe to the channel. I hope you all liked it. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button. And I'll see you all uh, next week for another StarCraft Today and tomorrow for a new IOTIS. Thanks so much for watching and bye bye.